Hello everyone, thank you for taking the time to watch this video about finding and adding copyright free media to Physiopedia. This is a really important topic because the vast majority of images you see online are not copyright free and if anyone adds one of these to the site, Physiopedia can be sued by the owner of the image. Copyright infringement lawsuits are big business and searching for images that have been used illegally is often an automated process that will eventually flag any copyrighted images we've used. It doesn't matter if we honestly thought an image was fair use or even if we take it down as soon as we're notified of the issue, we're still liable. It's therefore crucial that all our contributors not only understand how to check on the suitability of an image, but also know what information to include when you upload the image to Physiopedia so that other contributors can easily confirm that the image is suitable. So where do you start when you're looking for an image? It's very tempting to just do a Google search, but again, the majority of images will be under copyright and therefore not suitable for our purposes. If we take this example where we've Googled hip images, if I select any image here, you'll see this line underneath that images may be subject to copyright. You should always assume that there is copyright protection in place unless you find an explicit statement to the contrary. With this particular image um, we've used, this is from uh, shutterstock.com. So it's a nice image and if we actually go to their page, you'll see at the top here, they talk about these royalty free images. So it seems like a good, good option. But if we then um, look at that particular hip image and look at the licensing terms, they're quite complicated, but basically at the end of the day, what they say is that if you have an account and download the image, it's for your personal use. You're not allowed to share it with anyone else, especially not a public website like Physiopedia. So again, even one like this that looks promising has really nice images we can't use. If we look at some other images here, um, you'll see this one from the Mayo Clinic and down at the bottom here, it has the copyright symbol. It says all rights reserved. So we know we can't use that one. Sometimes you'll even see just a watermark of a company's logo somewhere on the image. Again, take that as a sign to just leave it alone. Overall, I just don't recommend taking an image straight from Google or any other search engine. Instead, I'll often use uh, Wikimedia Commons, um, which is basically the sort of media hosting site for Wikipedia. So if you are in Wikipedia and you click on any of the Im images, it will take you to Wikimedia here. And so if you see, for, say, for example, an image like this, one of the hip that you quite like and you want to use, what you do is you would click on the image and it's going to take you into um, the sort of details here. So again, if I give you an example, we'll click on anything. If I pick here more details, it will give me all this information associated with the image. So if we go back to our one of the hip here that we're, we might want to use for Physiopedia, scroll down to the licensing box and this will tell you the information you need. So again, with Mickey, Wikimedia Commons, the reason I like it is that because basically all the images you, you are able to use, but for our purposes, we still want to know what exact license we're using it under um, because we need to add that information when we upload the image to Physiopedia. So this is a little more unusual, but they have a few different licenses that they've released this image under that we can use. So the one that we're going to pick here is this Creative Commons. So most of the ones you'll see will be Creative Commons, um, either Creative Commons Attribution or uh, Creative Commons Attribution Share alike as well, and they'll have different numbers. And so this will match when we then go into Physiopedia and want to upload an image. So again, say I want to use this, what I'll basically do is um, right click, save the image, same way you normally would save it to your computer, and then you're going to upload it back into Physiopedia. So we would then go to the upload, upload file page on Physiopedia, and then we would search for the, the file on our computers. We're going to give it a file name. Please make the file name something um, that is related to the image. You know, sometimes you'll see ones that are image one, image two, but if someone then needs to search for an image on Physiopedia, that makes it a little hard. Whereas if I search for hip joint um, and I had 
named this image appropriately, then that would be one of the options that comes up. So it's really helpful for other users. And the other thing that I always ask people to do is include the URL from the website that you took the image from right here in the summary. Um, the reason I asked you to do that is sort of two main reasons. Um, for me as media manager, if I can't find the source of an image to confirm that it's copyright free, I will tend to remove it and find an alternative. So if you have a suitable image, make sure it's clear to anyone who looks into it. Um, so then we don't then have to alter this article that you've worked so hard on. If it is unsuitable, basically you know it's under copyright or you just don't know the status of the image, please err on the side of caution, choose a different image. If you ever need any help figuring out if you can use a particular image, just ask anyone. Um, second, including the URL in the summary box here will also help other Physiopedia contributors who want to use the image in the future. So let's say Jill uploads an image to Physiopedia and writes the source of the image in a caption when she adds the picture to the article. And so what I mean by caption would be sort of an example here, this image of the sacroiliac joint. So this is the caption underneath here. So sometimes I see it where, say for example, Jill, she will say where the image came from in this caption here. The problem with that is that, say in the future, if Jack then reuses the image, so he searches for a sacroiliac joint, and that's what she's named it, and this pops up, the caption that she wrote when she first used the image won't be copied to the second image that Jack is now using. Jack would have to go back to Jill's original um, article to see the caption. Um, and even I don't tend to look into things this way. But on the other hand, if Jill listed the source information at the time she uploaded the image, let's see if we click on here. So in that summary box we just saw for uploading an image, this will be the comment. And now this is always associated with this particular image wherever it's used. And you can see here that there are six different pages on Physiopedia that it's used on. So now on any of those pages, if somebody clicks on that picture, they will be able to find the original source of that image. Whereas if it was in the caption, that will only be in the caption for the first time that that image was used. So again, it's just really helpful. It also means that you don't have to put this really long caption on your image, which can sometimes make your page a little bit messy looking. I'll just share another few sources of images that I often use. The first one is uh, Bartleby.com here. Basically, this is a whole bunch of uh, Grey's Anatomy images, so it can be really nice when you need some, again, basic anatomy um, to use on, with your article. Um, and you can use anything that is Grey's Anatomy because they were first published before 1923, which is a sort of landmark date for copyright issues. And so you would select this particular licensing option when you upload to Physiopedia. And I'll show you that again here. That, um, so underneath where we had that summary box where you're going to include the URL and licensing, you can pick in a whole bunch of different uh, licensing options here, including that Creative Commons attribution that we saw. Um, and the one for any Grey's Anatomy would be this one here, first published before 1923 in the US. So that was Bartleby.com. Um, another nice option here is Primal Pictures. They've actually um, allowed us to use a, a few of their images for free on Physiopedia specifically, as long as we credit them appropriately. So when you want to use any of these images, you can just find the image bank on Physiopedia itself. Again, you can see there's a lot of images here. And just in this case, you would do a caption for your image and include um, the Primal Pictures there. And the third one I really like is anatomystock.com. They have a lot of really nice images, um, again, obviously related to anatomy, and they allow us to use some of those images for free. Um, you just need a special code if you're going to access these ones. So if that's the case, you just um, please let Rachel know. As you're writing articles for Physiopedia, you'll probably come across some great images in the research articles that you're reading for the content. Again, we have to be cautious with these images. If the article is behind a paywall, so basically if you need some sort of subscription or a login to read the article, then you can't use it on Physiopedia. Even with open access articles where you don't need a login, we can't necessarily use an image because the authors and publishers have only given permission for you to view the article and its images, not to reuse them. There can be instances where you can use an image though, you just have to check. So I'm going to give you an example from an image I used recently uh, on an article that I updated for Physiopedia. 
So this is the image title here, and where I took it from was this open access article. And so the reason in this case that I knew that I could use it, if I just scroll down to the image here, now if I click on the figure four hyperlink, it takes me to a little window specific to that image. And if I go up to the copyright license here information, again, I'll see open access, Creative Commons Attribution 4.0, um, and they say you can use it provided you give appropriate credit to the original authors and the source. So um, when I uploaded, what I did was this is the summary information. So I included this just the sort of link to the image, the copyright information, plus the full um, citation for the article. And then again, when I picked my licensing option it was the 4.0 as they mentioned and then in this case because I wanted to make it really clear um, when I put it on the page itself so this is the article on physiopedia that I used it on we just give it a second to load and here I did include again the full um, or the citation plus the description here in the caption just so it was really clear and that we've met um, the publisher's requirements for reusing that article. So when it comes to images in an article there should be a way to find out copyright information so you you'll know if you can or can't use it. Sometimes even the sources I've mentioned won't provide a suitable image. I've certainly had situations where I couldn't find something I felt was quite right for the page I was working on. You just have to do the best you can. If there's an image you think would be perfect for your article, but it seems to be under copyright, there's no harm in contacting the owners of the image or the website and asking if you can use it. You never know, you might get permission. If you're going to try this, I would just suggest asking Rachel or another member of the Physiopedia team for advice on how to word your request first. I'll just finish by touching on YouTube because this is the source of the vast majority of videos we link to on Physiopedia. So if you look under most videos you see on YouTube, if we come down to this part here, show more, then you'll see here it talk, we'll talk about the license and it's the standard YouTube license. That's the vast majority of videos you see, that is the license they'll have picked. More recently, uh, YouTube have started allowing Creative Commons licenses to be selected, but really this is more important if you are downloading and reusing any content that you're finding in a video. With the code that we use on Physiopedia, we're essentially just linking back to the video right on YouTube itself. We're not downloading or physically hosting the video on Physiopedia, so you're fine to use the video that you find on YouTube, regardless of which license applies. So that's basically all I wanted to share with you. I hope you find the information helpful and that you don't find the issue of copyright too daunting because again, it's so important that all our contributors respect copyright laws. If you're ever unsure about adding content that might be under copyright, please just reach out to someone else on the Physiopedia team because we'll be more than happy to help.